Welcome to another episode of Ape Answers. In this episode, number 14, we talk specifically about antenna recommendations for Baofeng or other cheap Chinese HT two-way radios. It's a question that I get asked often, and I figured it's about time that I make a video so I can direct people to that instead of answering the question all the time. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, our question comes from Muddy Boots Mac. And he asked this question on a video I did about four years ago called Fake Nagoya Antennas. Maybe it was five years ago. I can barely remember. Anyhow, he says, nice content, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Muddy Boots. He says, can you recommend me which Nagoya model should I get for my Balfang BF-F8 Plus? Now, I haven't provided an answer yet. And I know I'm a little late. And he asked two days ago. I'm going to give him a link to this video. Um, but what I'm going to say, and this is a little bit of a spoiler alert for the video, is, is that I don't recommend anybody upgrade the antenna on their Baofeng or any of the other lower-cost Chinese-made two-way radios. It's not that I'm a hater. There's nothing wrong with those radios. If you like them, use them. That's wonderful. I have some. I use them. All my friends do. They're wonderful, and so are the people who use them. But uh, what I am going to say is there are some technical limitations that typically don't get explained what you see is people constantly saying, oh, you need to upgrade your antenna, son, on that Bao Fang radio. And I I'm just think that they're repeating what they heard somebody else said in an effort to appeal or appear as an authority. And um, we're going to talk about why I don't recommend them. And hey, I'm not saying I'm an authority, but if you ask me a question like this, I'm going to tell you, don't do it. Okay, let's start by talking about the problem with Bao Fangs, or one of the problems. So cheap handheld two-way radios, particularly those manufactured in China under the Baofeng brand, things like the UV-5R, the BFF8, uv 2 BF888S, etc. Um, these have become immensely popular among amateur radio enthusiasts, preppers, and casual users due to their low cost. And all the people telling you how you'll be a ham boss if you use a Baofeng radio and how you're going to be an extreme operator. Anyhow, these radios are often criticized for having a wide open front end that can be easily overloaded by strong nearby signals. So let's take a few minutes to talk about the front end and explain that so we know what it means. In radio terminology, the front end is the first part of the receiver chain that encounters the incoming signal from the antenna. Typically, it includes a few things. The first one we're going to talk about is the pre-selector and bandpass filters. So these are designed to pass the frequencies of interest, for example, UHF and VHF type frequencies, while rejecting signals from far outside of these bands. In many Baofeng models, these filters are quite broad in order to cover 136 to 174 megahertz and 400 to 520 megahertz. That's a lot of spectrum that these radios cover, and that's part of the problem combined with the uh, filtering challenges that they have. Um, they do this without multiple um, expensive filter banks, and it causes some problems. Another part of the front end is the low noise amplifier. And what this does, it amplifies the weaker incoming signals while ideally adding as little noise as possible. The performance, linearity, noise figures, etc. of this stage are critical. Any distortion here degrades the entire receiver chain. And that passes off to the mixer, which mixes the incoming RF signal with a local oscillator to produce an intermediate frequency, or IF, you'll hear it, re you'll hear it referred to. This is a down conversion step, and it's a cornerstone of superheterodyne receivers. And what I'm going to say is, is that a lot of times amateur radio folks will say that the Balfangs are direct conversion. I have done it myself. They are actually a low-level type of superheterodyne super receiver, so I am going to be a better ham and talk about it more accurately and appropriately moving forward. So why is this a problem? And it's because these low-end, low-cost radios, uh, they have to accommodate a wide frequency range at minimal expense. The front-end filters are not as selective as those in higher-end commercial or amateur transceivers. Strong signals, even outside the attended band, can pass through and overload the LNA or mixer. And this results in a couple of different things. The first is desensitization, or desense you'll hear it referred to. And that's when the receiver becomes deaf due to, to weak signals because the strong signals force the radio into a nonlinear operation. <clears throat> or they cause automatic gain reduction. And I've got videos showing this where if you have too many strong signals coming in, the radio just becomes totally quiet. You're not hearing anything on it. 
And that is an example of overloading or desensitization. Um, the other thing is, is that you have something called intermodulation. And this is um, sometimes where folks will refer to this as adjacent channel rejection. But when you have strong multiple signals um, mixing together in a nonlinear front end stage, it creates spurious signals to summon the difference of the products. Um, and that can land on your desired frequency and cause interference there. Uh, this can happen when you're using your radio in RF rich environments like a ham fest, for example. And so this is really the point of the video. And we're going to talk about how a higher gain antenna can make uh, overload worse. And, you know, just for the record, with radios that have challenging front ends and get overloaded easily, I don't recommend a high gain antenna. And I'm going to say with the Baofangs and all of the other Chinese radios, just leave the factory antenna on there. You're going to be better off in the long run in more conditions. So a higher gain antenna collects all the signals more effectively, both the ones you want, like a repeater or a station of interest, and those that you don't want. Pager transmitters, broadcast stations, uh, even adjacent handband signals. So when the front end is already prone to overload, boosting all of these signals make the situation significantly worse. Stronger undesired signals mean increased likelihood of overload, increased chance of intermodulation. The more powerful signals can easily drive the radio's front end into nonlinear regions. And, and the problem with this is that it uses this RDA 1846 transceiver chip. And it's one of the cost-saving secrets to Balfang's affordability. And this is why they all copy the original Balfang's. It's a, a single chip integration uh, on the 1846 or variants like the 1846S or the AT1846. This chip includes a local oscillator, mixers for transmit and receive, analog to digital conversions, uh, digital, digital signal processing cores for FMD modulation, and audio amplifier functions. So this high level of integration drastically cuts down the number of discrete components and lowers manufacturing costs, and that's why they do that. But this is not the best way to achieve quality results on the front end of a radio, and that's why we have this particular problem. So models known to use the RDA-1846 are variants. I'm talking specifically about Valfangs now, but they all use it. So it's the UV5R family, the 5R, the 5RA, the 5RB, the 5RE, the 5RE++, the BFF8, the F8+, the BFF8HP, the UV82s, 82HP, UVL, the 888 variants, the GT3, the GT3TP, etc., and so although Balfang releases uh, numerous minor cosmetic or firmware variations, almost all the radios share the same underlying 1846-based architecture. Anyhow, I hope that answers the question for you. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching.